What's going on everybody? Welcome back to our Edge Studio. Today we are learning how to do this layout and grab your sparkling water, grab your cheese string, whatever you need to get started and let's hop right into it. Okay, as always, we're going to go ahead and create our new document. And for this one, we're doing inches, eight and a half by 11 in portrait orientation. We're doing two facing pages. And since we don't want the cover page, we're gonna start at page two. We're gonna leave the column as is, but we're gonna make sure that the margins is a little bit bigger. So at 0.625 rather than the default, which is at half an inch. Um, and we're going to go ahead and just create this document. So we're gonna go ahead and start off on the left page. So we want to anchor it with one of our anchor images. So I'm going to go to the rectangular frame tool and just drag an image that I think is big enough because on the bottom, we still want some text. That looks pretty good, it's about one third across the page. All I'm going to do is drag my image into this box. You can see it's a little bit big, so we're going to go ahead and right click, fitting, fit frame proportionally. Now you can see that some people are cut off, we don't really want that, so if I double click into it again, you can see that this is the boundary of the actual image. I can actually move this guy up or down, and if I hold shift, I can do it orthogonally. And what I want to do is round out the edges because this is a more bubbly layout, so I wanna round out the edges. So I select the frame, go to objects, and we're going into corner options, and then we're going to rounded. And if you switch on the preview and you just change these number, you can see that my edges of this shape is being rounded. So let's do something like a 0.75 inch. Okay, great. Now all we have to do is populate this with some text. So I'm going over to the type tool. I'm going to drag out my title block. So if this is something like a join us in our fun skateboarding adventures theme, then I can do that. On the bottom of this, we're going to do another type tool and just drag a box with some placeholder text. So I'm going to drag it all the way to the margin and I'm going to just right click and then fill it with placeholder text. Now I kind of want this thing to be two different columns. So what we're going to do is select this text box, right click, go into our text frame options. And then all you're going to do is switch this on to two. And that's all you're gonna need to do. Then you're gonna go ahead and click okay. All right, next we're gonna give it a little bit of a flare. So we want some type of text wrap element on the bottom just to give it that extra mm that you really need on this page, okay? So we're gonna go over to the pen tool with a P and I'm just gonna make a nice curve. So I'm starting out by clicking right here and all I'm doing is dragging my mouse and dragging my mouse. Don't drag your mouse too many times because the lesser amount of times you click on the page with pen tool, the smoother your curve actually gets. So I'm gonna round it off by clicking at where I started and I'm just gonna preview this um, in a fill color just to see what it looks like. Yeah, that looks pretty good, I like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this a gradient. Now, in terms of gradients, we really want to make that synonymous with what our picture is doing on the top. Before that, we wanna bring up our gradient. So if I go up to window and I go down to color and I bring up the gradients tab. In addition, I also wanna to go to window, color, and I'll bring up the swatches tab. So you can see that both of these will pop up. And what I'm going to do is actually click the shape that we just created, click anywhere in this line for the gradients, and you can see that it's filled it in with a gradient. Now, what I'm going to do is actually use the color theme tool, or you can use the eyedropper tool as well, but I like to use the color theme tool. And just click in the sky. We want this to be a blue theme, so I'm gonna click in the sky, and it'll give us a bunch of colors that we can use. You can choose different ones, but this looks like a great color to actually put into our gradient. I'm gonna drag this blue onto the right side. And then for the left side, um, let's try this color. I'm not sure if I'm a big fan of this color, so I'm gonna go ahead and just use Adobe's default color and use this blue instead. That looks like a lot better than the other one. And what I'm gonna do is actually go into the gradient swatch tool, which is shortcut key G. And I'm just gonna drag around until I find something that I like. Now you can see that the text is a little bit cut off. What we're going to do is go into window. We're going into our text wrap, so right here. And then all we're going to do is select the shape that we have. 
And then we're going to select this icon right here, which is wrap around object shape. And you can see that we're already getting some text that is moving around. We can increase the border. So you can see that there is a invisible line here. It's basically the boundary of where the text could be. So maybe something like that. And yeah, that looks pretty good. Now to round off this page, if we want something like a QR code where people can scan, InDesign actually does that for us. So if we go up to objects, we can go to QR code. Here I already input our new website. You should definitely check it out. Um, it's something that we made. And right now we're giving away a free resume template. So definitely get that while you still can. But anyways, going back into this, uh, if I want people to go to iyhstudio.com, I go down to where type is and I select web hyperlink. And all I have to do is paste this in here. You can change this into a different color, but I'm gonna keep it on black because my page is white. So after you click OK, it's going to give you an image and I'm going to click somewhere on the page just to insert the image. So try that out, scan that barcode and you'll end up on the website. Moving on to the right side of the page, we are going to be doing a little bit of a fun graphic. So before we do anything, I'm going to go ahead and just fill it with a background. So I'm dragging a rectangle tool all the way out like this. And what I'm going to do is just fill it with the same gradient. So if I go to the gradient swatch tool, I should have my gradient from previously. And all I have to do is drag this around until I see something that I like. Now, keeping in mind that we want this page to not be super light because our text is going to be white. We want more darker colors than brighter colors on this page. So for the next part, we're actually gonna be using something to help us get that nice bubble text. We're gonna be using Pixlr, which is today's sponsor. I actually like Pixlr because it makes everything super fast. I don't have to go into Photoshop and do this, where I can do this in maybe like two or three minutes. In Photoshop, I might have to spend five to 10 minutes. So go ahead and go into Pixlr X. We're gonna go ahead and just create a new layout. Go ahead and go to print. And then right here, you can see that we have eight and a half by 11. Let's just say it's a flyer. That works just fine for us. Here, we can go ahead and create text. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some new text. And let's say that this is a very flowy layout. So let's think of some words that rhymes with flow. All right, these five were the ones that came to my mind first. Flow, blow, slow, toad, road. So we're going to go ahead and change this into a font that is more bubbly. So here I just change it to a font called punch. And I'm just going to go ahead and select everything here and increase the size until it basically fills up the entire page. You can see that the spacing between them is very big. I don't really want that. So I'm going to turn this down so that they're, they're like just barely touching one another. Great. We're actually going to go and scroll down and turn on the curve. So we kind of want this to do a nice bell curve, maybe going up. So we can just give it a little bit of a curve. And then if we go into wrap, you can see that we can also make it do a lower wrap like this. And you know, adjust this until you find something that really works. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and actually right click on these words and we're going to make it into an image file. So I'm gonna go ahead and rasterize this layer. And all we're going to do is hit liquidify, which is also down here. And what we're going to do is just push. We're gonna push things. So I'm gonna turn up the size so that they're kind of half, halfway up the letters. And all I'm going to do is basically swirl my mouse across the screen like, like that, okay? So for flow, we're gonna do something like that. You can see that there is a, it's like something kind of use their finger and just whoop. And we're gonna do that for every single one of these. Okay, now that we've done it for every single one of these, looks pretty funky, I love it. We're gonna go ahead and just save this. So go ahead and save it as a PNG. Make sure you have transparent checked on. It's pretty important. All right, back in InDesign, we're going to create a rectangular frame tool, make it occupy the entire page, and we're going to drag and drop that image that we just made into this. So there it is. I'm gonna use the shortcut key control Alt Shift C to fit it proportionally in my picture. And you can see that it's already looking pretty good. Now that we have it fitted in the frame, we're gonna give it a little bit of a outline. So I'm gonna go ahead and just create a rectangle tool. And then I'm just gonna drag it from margin all the way to the other margin. And I'm going to use white 
to basically fill this. So this is going to be a white outline and I'm going to give it something like a three or even a four thickness, just so you can see it clearly, okay? So if I press preview with W here, you can see that it's something like that. Now I want to basically have this so that where the letters are coming in, they don't interact, but rather the outline is kind of letting the letter flow a little bit. So we're gonna go over to the scissor tool or shortcut C, and we're just going to cut this right where it kind of interacts with the border. And after you've cut everything, we're gonna go ahead and just delete the stuff that we cut. So this is one segment that we cut. Go ahead and hit delete. Right here is another segment. Right here is another segment on the L. What we can actually do is double click into this. And this is a little bit of a, a cool design trick is if we hold down Alt and Shift, and then we drag this so that it's actually smaller, maybe not that small, and we move this up a little bit, you can actually see that we can fit some text down here if we want. And I think that's actually a pretty good move while still retaining the quirky looking frame. So we're gonna add a little bit of a text down here. Maybe it's just a sentence or two. And then we're going to center justify this, make sure that it's in a similar font as what we had on the other side and make sure that this is in a color that we can actually read. If you zoom out, that's what you see. We'll have a super funky, super cool layout like that. So again, if you guys have learned anything new, please don't hesitate to leave a like, subscribe, and share with your friends. Make sure you comment down below what you wanna see next and check out our website to support the channel. With that said, I hope you guys have learned something from this episode and I'll see you guys in the next one.